Hey guys, I want to talk to you today about the notion of being found guilty or being a suspect because you didn't act right, because you didn't react right. Hey, my name is Corey Scott. I am a criminal defense attorney here in Indianapolis, Indiana. And one of the things that really drives me crazy is, and this is yet, let me just say this before I launch into this, this is yet another reason not to talk to law enforcement, not to talk to the police, not to go down and give a statement. And here's the reason. I've seen so many times to where you get to a trial and they'll put up an officer and, and most likely it's the detective, the lead detective, the person that's running the investigation. And inevitably, there comes a point in time in which they'll, they'll say, did you find anything odd about how Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so reacted when you first told them the horrible news? When you first told them that their fiance had been shot or their spouse was found dead, et cetera, et cetera. And then the detective would say, yes. Well, what was the detective that you found that was so fascinating or interesting? Well, you know, I found it interesting that Mr. So-and-so didn't show a lot of emotion. I found it interesting because I was really puzzled because Mrs. So-and-so, she just didn't seem really surprised about it. It was almost as if she already knew. Now, here's what blows my mind about that, people. These people get up on the stand and they act as if there's some type of human being handbook as to how to react to horrible news. Like there's a certain thing that you should do. There's a certain amount of emotion that you should show. And it's absolute hogwash. It's a bunch of baloney. And, and for several reasons, I mean, number one, these people before encountering the suspect, they never knew the person, never had any interaction with the person. They don't know whether this was a person that was normally gregarious and outgoing and outspoken or whether or not this was a person that was always even killed or very quiet. And so, well, they simply don't have the information or the data to say that, oh, it was odd the way he, you know, I've known so-and-so for 20 years. And normally I would expect him to react a certain way. And normally she would say a certain thing, perhaps. Or I would expect her to do this or that. You don't know the person from a can of pain. How can you sit up there and say that they should have reacted a certain way or they should have said something? The other thing that blows my mind is that, I mean, there are so many things that go through our heads and our minds when we get jarring information like that. I mean, think about it. Think about a time in which you got some information that you didn't expect and it was something that was really, really serious, you know, that someone was dead or someone got killed. I mean, there's there is a myriad of emotions that go through us. Sometimes we're just shocked. And so we don't say anything. Why? Because we're still trying to process things. We're still trying to really understand what we're hearing. We still can't believe it. I mean, how many times have you had someone say, my God, I can't believe that. I was just talking to Sally last night and she was so vibrant. She was so full of life. Sometimes we're just shocked. So no, we may not show any emotion. We may not say anything because we're still trying to process it. But you'll get this detective or get some expert, some body language expert or somebody that wants to get up there and say, oh my God, yeah, I mean, I, I was immediately struck by the fact that she didn't even say anything. She didn't even react. It was almost as if he knew already. Um. And so it's just absolute craziness. And then there are times when a person does react and then they'll say, well, it just seems like his reaction was so over the top. It was almost as if he was putting on. It was almost as if 
he probably knew that he was a prime suspect and he was trying to throw us off his scent. And so you have two polar opposites. I mean, you really have a situation to where if you don't react, you're in a bad boat. If you overreact, then you're still in a bad situation. It's, I mean, it's the ultimate, you know, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. Regardless of which way you go, law enforcement most of the time will say that, man, it was somehow suspicious. It was somehow off, you know, it wasn't what we expected. And all of it is a bunch of baloney. And so this is yet another reason not to talk to the authorities, not to go down there in the first place. And if they want to say that, you know, if the only thing they can say is, well, we asked Mr. So-and-so for a statement and he told us that, you know, um, he didn't want to give a statement or he exercised his rights to be silent or she exercised her Fifth Amendment rights, or she said she wanted to talk to an attorney, so be it. Because I can tell you from sitting there watching it in court to where they get up there and they give this, this, you know, this crazy testimony that I would much rather have the only thing that can be said is that, you know, we didn't get a statement. And they can't really get up there and go on and on about why you didn't get a statement or anything because that's against the rules. You can't be penalized. And the judge will even tell, you know, the jurors, hey, you're you're not to take anything from the fact that Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so didn't give a statement. They have an absolute right not to speak to law enforcement and, and that's all. You know, you're not to even factor that in. So you're much better having that be the instruction, having that be the information that comes out at trial, as opposed to these people that want to get up there and they want to put on as if they're mind readers, as if they've known you for 20 years, as if there's some type of handbook as to how to react and put yourself in a bad situation. So this is yet another reason why. And stack that, up, stack that on all of the other reasons I've given you. Go back and look at the whole library of videos. But stack this one on top of all of the other reasons that I've given you as to why it's always a bad idea to talk to the police. I hope this has been helpful. You have questions about it, please reach out to me. I'd love to hear. Uh, from you or if you just have a comment, you know, I'd love to hear that as well or do me a favor and get the word out and pass this along to someone and until next time remember if you have to be found guilty of anything be found guilty of greatness take great care